If you are renovating a bathroom with a shower stall, you may want to consider a shower enclosure kit. They usually come in four pieces. There's a shower pan like this and three walls. And they're made from acrylic with reinforced fiberglass, so they're durable, they're watertight, and easy to clean. The shower in this bathroom was cramped and outdated, so we removed the stall and the small linen closet to make room for a much larger shower. The rough plumbing was in the wrong place, so we moved the PVC drain and the P-trap. Relocated the hot and cold water supply pipes. And reinstalled the subfloor. Next, we dry fit the shower pan and carefully inspect it. It's very important to check it with a level on all four sides. If one side is low, you can level it with a few shims or sometimes use a full shingle. Apply plumber's putty to the bottom of the drain flange. A little pipe dope will fill in any small imperfections on the bottom of the pan. Install the gaskets in the nut and tighten it down with adjustable pliers and remove any putty that squeezes out on the top side. We then mix up a batch of mortar and spread it evenly on the floor. The paper underneath will prevent the mortar from falling through the cracks in the floorboard. Set the pan in place and press it down into the wet mortar. Now you may need to wiggle a little bit to bring it down to make sure you have good contact with the mortar and the shims. Double check it to make sure that the pan is still level and then secure it to each stud with the clips provided. Once the mortar has set up, you can cut the PVC drain to the exact height by using a special drill attachment that cuts on the inside of the pipe. Then just add the rubber gasket, tighten the brass nut, and install a cover plate. For the rest of the installation, it's a good idea to protect the shower pan. Measure the correct height and depth for the mixing valve. Most valves are installed between 40 and 44 inches high, but you can install it higher or lower if you want. Dry fit the copper pipes and the mixing valve and secure them to the studs or blocking of the newly framed walls. Solder the joints carefully. To prevent damaging the valve, make sure it's in its open position while you solder. Install a test nipple in the shower head elbow. Then turn on the water and check for leaks. If you live in a cold climate and your shower is on an exterior wall, make sure you insulate the wall correctly and install a vapor barrier. Set the back panel of the shower enclosure in place, making sure that it seats properly on the shower pan. Screw the top of the panel into the stud. Some enclosures like this one have pre-drilled holes. If your panels don't, be sure to pre-drill some oversized pilot holes to avoid splitting the flange. Usually the panel won't require any caulking, but the manufacturer of this enclosure recommends a short L-shaped bead at the very front of the pan. Set the side panel in place and make sure that it engages properly in the pan. Screw the panel to the studs at the top and along the side. Carefully measure the location of the valve and mark the remaining panel. Drill a pilot hole and then use a hole saw to cut the opening. To make a clean cut in the acrylic, drill from the inside of the panel and run the drill in reverse to score the surface. Then change direction to finish the cut. Then. Install the last panel, just like the others. The final step is to install the trim kit for the shower valve. That's about it. The only thing left to do is install the wall board, the shower head, and the shower door. The key to installing a direct-to-stud shower enclosure is to make sure that the rough plumbing and the wall framing are done properly. If you get those right, 
Setting the pan and installing the walls should be pretty straightforward. 